Hello there, Scorpios. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, when I was shuffling out this uh, spread for this month, um, I saw two images. And um, your reading is very similar to Cancer's reading. Because um, I see, like with Cancer's reading, I saw like a child at the beach. With your reading, I see a woman at the beach, okay? So I, I feel like the energy might be a continuation or might be very similar thematically. And it also might be echoing the same types of themes, okay? Um, so let me just talk to you about the images first. I feel like there are two images, but they're both echoing the same theme. And so the words that came out is unwanted attention, unwanted attention, unwanted, um, you know, like solicitors or, or just people coming at you and you're just like, no, I, I'm not ready or I, I don't really want that. So that's coming in. So the first image that I saw is I see a nice beachy scenery. It's really beautiful. It's really serene. It's not too hot, not too cold. There's wind blowing. So you get a little bit of a sea breeze. And I see this um, this beach and right at the shore, okay, so right where the, the, the water hits the, the, the beach, there's a woman. She's got her water shoes on and she's jogging. Like she's jogging, she enjoys the, the sea breeze, she's just there on her own, she just wants to be left alone and she's jogging. Um, and um, she has her headphones on, right? And then I see her jogging for a really long while. She has stamina. She has, you know, the, the strength to continue on. And then I see this young man. He's like, he, he's wearing like board shorts. He's on a bike, you know, one of those uh, trick bikes that a lot of young men or young um, or teenagers ride and they do like wheelies and they do, you know, tricks. So he's on one of those, he sees her, and then he's like biking alongside her, trying to get her attention, trying to talk to her. So keep in mind, this woman's got her headphones on, or earphones on, and she's running, she's just minding her own business. He comes in, like literally swoops in, and uh, tries to engage her in conversation. And you know, she, she knows that he's interested in her, but um, she's like answering some of the questions, but she doesn't stop. She keeps going. She keeps going. And then it, the scene kind of cuts out. So I don't know if he leaves her alone or what, but I feel like he, she keeps going and he's like still biking alongside her. Um, so when I saw this, I was like, you're definitely getting a lot of uh, attention from your environment. Some of it could be un like unwanted attention, you know, getting a lot of suitors, getting a lot of people. Um, wanting to be around you and especially people who are popping out of the woodworks they they sculpt you from afar and then they kind of beeline it for you and they might interfere with your schedule they might interfere with your time they might interfere with your alone time more than anything because I feel like this woman is not getting the alone time that she needs okay and then the second um, image that I saw is very similar I see this woman in her backyard, um, she's got a yoga mat on the ground and she's like, you know, in the lotus position, trying to meditate, working on her breathing techniques, trying to clear her head. And it seems like it's a in it, it, it's like on a Sunday in the morning, she's, you know, got the day to herself, she's in no rush, so she's just meditating. And this butterfly comes by and it's like fluttering near her and she sees it and then she closes her eyes just, you know, so she doesn't get distracted. And then it hovers around her ears, and then her nose, and then her her head. And she doesn't swat it away. She tries to like um, ignore it. You know, she she tries to like it's not doing anything malicious or mean towards her. So she tries to just ignore it. And yet it keeps hovering around her her space, and you can see her getting distracted. Okay, so those are the two images that I'm seeing in your environment, and. Um, once again, you know, going with the theme of, um, you know, unwanted attention, I've already mentioned that I just feel like a lot of people will be demanding your attention. Situations will demand your attention. I do see a lot of distractions coming in from family members, okay? And you guys are kind of like the, the pillar of um, stability in your family unit, okay? You're the one that other people come to for advice. You guys give very, very good advice. You're the one that people come to when they're in a jam and they need you to somehow bail them out of a tough situation. Like literally, 
bailing them out of jail, bailing them out of a, a crisis. If they're they have a flat tire, instead of calling AAA or their insurance carrier or you know a tow truck, they they call you because you guys are just uh, they know that you're very dependable and they know you will always be there. So you know, I feel like some people have no business calling you, but they do because you're kind of um, the person that they trust. Okay, so I feel like. You do it. You you want to help. You want to step in. You want to intervene, and you want to alleviate the situation because you understand that whoever's calling you, they might not even be family members, but they might not have like anybody else in their world to help them with these things, and so they call you. So in a way, when we're entrusted、uh, with responsibilities, or when other people really trust us and they can confide in us and they come to us for advice or for help. It can be very flattering, right? It, it can feel like,、oh, okay, this person really, really puts their trust in me. It can feel very flattering. It can feel very、um, good. However, if it's a situation where it's it's not about self help, it's not about self sufficiency. It's more about you know having a crutch that this person relies on. It can be very detrimental. So I, I feel like it's really important for you to kind of draw your boundaries. Demarcation, okay? Like demarcation comes up.、Um, it's really important for you to focus that time on self care, self help, and、um, teaching somebody how to do something versus coming to their rescue every single time. So I feel like we need to kind of、uh, look at a situation a little bit more objectively and leave our feelings out of it, and to figure out, you know, why is this person relying on me for these things? You know. Um, shouldn't they have somebody in their lives that they can ask for help, or shouldn't they learn to be self-sufficient? Call a tow truck. Call a、uh, you know, and and not a lot of people have the resources to call a tow truck, to call like、uh, an insurance company, to call like、um, a mechanic. Okay, not a lot of people have those luxury and and just the the resources. And so I feel like on an innate level, you understand that you understand that they've fallen on some hard times and they need to get back on their feet. So you try to do everything that you can to help a situation. But I feel like it's not just something as straightforward and as clear cut as like getting a flat tire and they're calling you. I feel like it's an emotional response. It's an emotional crutch. It's an emotional way of doing and pattern. That they are repeating, where they can't really take care of themselves, and so they might、um, reach out to you to take care of that part of themselves. Does that make sense? So it's really important to understand the difference when someone is in real dire need versus when somebody is just constantly, you know, have you on speed dial, have you、uh, through text messages constantly reaching out and trying to get that attention. Okay. I feel like there was a situation in the past. Okay. And every couple of days, this person would be coming into the picture, and I feel like、um, your right now something happened in September, and your lack of response has has them very down in the dumps. Okay, have you the Five of Cups? This is a situation where somebody is not able to bring their best to a situation. They 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 come with a lot of drama, with a lot of issues. They're not self sufficient emotionally and physically, and they're just like constantly relying on other people. And the game gets old. Okay, this whole concept about you know woe is me, it gets old. And then people, many people from their in their lives in their social circle, have、uh, called it quits. They they just can't handle this codependency. And so I feel like you're dealing with somebody who has driven people away, who has fallen on some hard times, emotional hard times, and I feel like you know they're constantly reaching out because you know their their inner circle have seen them for have have seen their their unhealthy behaviors and these patterns, and they're not no longer around with these people, and so they're、um, kind of reaching out to you. You might be you know the the last resort, or you might even be. Sort of like that emotional crutch, okay? So I feel like you guys are smart enough emotionally. You're very, very, very intelligent, and I feel like a lot of the times, out of courtesy, out of just your own sense of like、um, moral duty, I feel you help people, even though you know that they're prone to this type of behavior. You help them because you care about them, okay? You don't want to hurt anybody. And I feel like 
none of this is lost on you. It's like you you know what they're about and you know it's not right and you know it's not a good behavior and it's not a good pattern to enable. But you do it because you feel like, okay, they, they could need this. They could need this favor from me and it, it doesn't detract so much from me, but it will help them. And so you do it, not because you're a fool, but because you care about people. And I feel like something has happened where you are putting your guard up, okay? They're coming in, this unicorn, uh, kicking up a cloud of dust, or I'm sorry, this horse, not the unicorn, kicking up a cloud of dust, you know, coming with some type of a calamity. It's always like somebody who's got a lot of drama in their lives. They're always, um, there's always some type of a, um, there's always some type of a chaos or some type of a time sensitive issue. Like a lot of drama is what I'm seeing. A lot of hoof beats and drum beats and a lot of noise and calamity in their wake. And I feel like you're sensing that it's coming intuitively. You guys are sensing that there's something coming into the picture. And you're at a point where your guard is up, your walls are up, you're demarcating, you know, that line in the sand. And you're just like, no, I'm here in a state of Zen. I need to work on myself. I need to be emotionally present for myself. I'm not in a position to help you. And in the process of, I feel, withdrawing, you know, withdrawing the attention, withdrawing the, the love and the affection, and just uh, not wanting to engage with this person anymore and not wanting to, you know, feed into this, okay? And creating this uh, enabling behavior or even this pattern of um, codependency, I feel like they might have lashed out and they might have said like a lot of hurtful things. So we have here the Five of Swords and this is a situation where too much has been said. This is the aftermath of some type of a conflict, okay? The house is destroyed. There's smoke rising from the air. The earth is barren. And this person, rather than feeling remorse, they're like, it is what it is. You know, you hurt me, I hurt you. You would draw affection from me, I would draw affection from you. And I will uh, decimate or desecrate everything that's in my way. So you, I, feel like, I feel like you're dealing with someone who's... Um, the word spoil comes out and needy and spoiled and... Um, someone who wants to win at all costs, okay? They don't care that the, the, the village, the civilization gets destroyed. They just want to have it their way and they want to come out the winner. And I feel like there was a situation where you might have withdrew. You might have, you know, cut back on the communication, cut back on that, uh, the enabling that pattern. You drew your mark in the sand. And I feel like somebody was not happy and I feel like they might have tried to egg you on or they might have tried to, um, you know, do a lot of things for attention getting, okay? Re re reverting to like childish behavior, attention getting and things like that. And I feel like this isn't somebody who is on the forefront of your world in the month of October, but you're going to hear bits and snippets about them. And I feel like it's going to make you, it's kind of like validation and proof that I'm so glad I withdrew. I'm so glad I'm no longer in it. And I'm so glad that person is no longer in my life. So you're getting some type of validation where, um, where your intuition was telling you all along to kind of like, you know, put an end to this, sever the situation, cut ties. And I felt like you cared about them. You don't want to hurt anybody. And so you kind of let it, you know, drag on. And then whenever you put a stop to it, you're getting immediate validation, as in, especially for the month of October 2019 that it was the right thing to do. I, sh I did it at the right time because, you know, they kind of spiral out of, out of control. I'm seeing this spiral of smoke and I feel like there is somebody who's not able, when they're not able to get the attention that they want, they, they revert to, you know, very um, uh, so, like um, self-defeating behaviors, okay? On the flip side of this, I do feel like there is a situation here where you have people at your doorstep, people coming in, getting, um, you know, getting like a, a host of invitation, receiving a host of invitation to do things, as well as getting people to come into your, your, your house, into your space, sharing space with somebody. And I'm also hearing the word like communion. 
both of these cards. These are wonderful cards. This is about, you know, family, solidarity, and people getting together. And this is about, you know, sharing, um, sharing toys, playing together, as well as sharing, like, um, you know, having that sense of communion and community with a, a, another person. I feel for many of you, this is a significant other that you might be dealing with. And I feel like this is somebody there where there's a lot of reciprocity, okay? We have here the Ten of Pentacles, which is the apex. Emotional groundedness and stability, financial stability, financial abundance, as well as the Nine of Cups, which is a wish coming true, but also having that emotional abundance and emotional reciprocity with another person, okay? So these are very positive card, and these are cards that indicate to me that you might have left somebody else out in the cold in the past, and that person is no longer um, piercing through your bubble, is what I'm hearing. They're no longer affecting you on an emotional level. Um, you've learned to detach emotionally, and you've learned to kind of like let them be self-sufficient, let them figure things out on their own, let them resolve issues on their own. And as a result of that, you've resurrected these walls and this bubble and you're taking care of the people that really matter to you where there's that that equal sense of stability and reciprocity you you were dealing with a taker scorpios someone who took from you and i'm serious when i say like every time they come in there's like some type of a calamity some type of a situation that they put themselves in and it could have been prevented, but it was just, you know, choices, decisions that they made to always put themselves into these dire circumstances. And so you had to remove yourself from that energy and you had to, you know, focus on you and your relationships and the people that matter. And as a result of that, life has been very, very calm. Okay. And I want to say as well, um, Scorpios and, um, I feel like Scorpios, Aquarius, Aries, and uh, Sagittarius in particular, you guys crave a little bit more of an excitement, okay? And, and that might be why a lot of the times you might see people who are not very compatible with you because the, the opposition and the, um, the, the attraction is very, very strong. And I'm not just talking relationship partners. I, I mean, like in all facets of your life, you want, you crave a little bit of excitement. And so I feel like this was an exciting person that was, like, you know, coming at you with a lot of chaos all the time. And then over time, it ceased to be exciting. It became a burden. And I feel like you've laid down your burden the month of September or even maybe even before that. You're working on yourself, building up your emotional sense of self and then your financial stability. And things have been going really, really well for you. And I also feel like there's a lot in here, especially for those of you who have recently gotten out of a relationship, um, this is pretty much, you know, like um, the two images that I saw, people who are single, who are like, I'm not dating right now, I'm taking a break from dating, I'm working on myself, so there's a lot of like meditation, there's a lot of alone time that you want to spend with yourself, you want to get your, your yourself physically active. You want to get yourself um, like in shape. You want to take care of yourself. It's not about just you know um, looking good. It's it's more about like being a whole person, healing yourself from the inside out, eating right, exercising, taking care of yourself, meditating. So taking care of yourself, mind, body, and soul. Okay, we have a recovery phase. We have this is a as a uh, spiritual breakthrough, realizing areas that might be off kilter or might be off balance and working on these things doing a spiritual cleansing doing a physical cleansing and um cleansing areas of your life that have been blocked so if you feel like somebody's energy is negative you're going to not um, engage with them if you feel like someone's taking a lot of your time and you don't even have time for yourself you're choosing not to engage in that way you're you're learning to draw boundaries so this is a lot about self-care um, self-work healing and I feel like you know it doesn't have to be all oh, right after a breakup then we go on a binge or whatever um, this is just you know f figuring out that I haven't had a lot of time for myself I've been taking care of too many things I need some downtime I'm gonna find some downtime I'm gonna make room and prioritize that and I feel like for some of you there might have been like um, some 
I'm, I'm seeing like food allergies. I'm seeing like issues when it comes to digestions as well, because this is um, really prone to overeating as well. Okay, so I feel like you might be doing a cleanse. You might do, be doing some type of a dietary change, and you're taking it one step at the time. Okay, so testing the waters, doing things in moderation, not doing things in excess. And I feel like this is all areas of your life. And so what I'm sensing as well is um, there's a situation here where you're very much focused on that and vibrationally and spiritually, you're on a very, very high level. You're aware of what you need to do and you're aware of the behaviors from other people that have not been conducive for healing and for, you know, really spending time with yourself. And so you're on this path, on this uh, journey here towards uh, self-care. Um, learning to put yourself first, learning to, you know, um, l understanding, I feel, that just because we love somebody, it, it doesn't mean we want to enable bad behaviors, okay? It's not about calling people out on it and being mean. It's just about detaching yourself from things that are not good for you and focusing on self-care. And when we are focused solely on self-care, uh, we are ascending. And I feel like your vibration is really high. And a lot of people energetically they feel that and they do cling on to you and that's why you're going to be getting a lot of unwanted attention from suitors from people around you from people that want to you know take up your time that want to be in your company and i feel like they might not um do it in an appropriate way i mean if you look at that first image right she's uh, got her earphones on she doesn't want to have a conversation she's at the beach she's running and the, the guy just um, keeps pestering her, okay? So it's like, it's very inconsiderate and it, it's, it's like clueless, not being able to, he's not able to read the social cues. She's trying to be nice and we don't know how the scene ends, but she's trying to be nice and he's not getting it. So I feel like you need to be a lot more expressive with your emotional needs, Scorpios. And you need to, you know, kind of let people know whether or not they are infringing upon your space um, or your 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 energy, okay, and whether or not they're really taking from you. Um, so that's like pretty much the first six cards, okay. What I do sense here is there's a situation. Um, I, I feel like there's like an undertaking that is very very big, okay. We have here the Temperance card, and this is a card about moderation, small steps, one step, one foot in front of the other, and we keep walking, okay? So it's like doing something, and um, the Temperance card, is it's about um, holding back a little bit, doing things in a very methodical manner, and so what we're seeing is, you know, the, the angel pouring the, the water from the two cups, right, one cup into the other. It has to be done in a very meticulous manner, in the right time, in the right uh, fashion, so that the, the water doesn't spill out. So there's something that requires a lot of calculation. It re requires a lot of research. It requires a lot of thinking over, mulling over, trying to figure things out, trying to itemize, trying to like get all the, the, the moving parts all lined up into place so that everything moves at the same time. So I feel like there's a, a big undertaking, a big endeavor. Uh, it's linked up here with the High Priestess, and both of these are major arcana cards. And I feel like there's a situation here where you are very, very nervous, you're very trepidatious, you're very like, um, I wonder if it's the right time, I wonder if I should do this today or tomorrow. And I feel like you're trying to um, go with your gut instinct, okay? You guys have like um, a really strong sixth sense about you. Even if you don't believe in, you know, metaphysical teachings or even if you don't meditate, you guys have a very, very strong um, sense of like intuition, divine timing, know when, knowing when something is right. And I feel like you always have, um, you have relied on it and you might not have even called it your gut instinct. You might have not even called it, you know, your intuition. But I feel like you always know whether or not to do something or whether or not to cut somebody off. Hence, you were able to cut somebody off at the right time before they drag you down. And I feel like you start to realize that I really need to trust my intuition a lot more. And um, I have a, a friend who is an Aries with a Scorpio rising. And she has told me that... Um, 
she always has like an inkling about people, about things, and every time she goes against her instinct, uh, bad things happen. So she said that, okay? And so I feel like you live with this, okay? You, you have this really strong sense of knowing on a gut level, and you have never been wrong. And every time you choose not to listen to it, bad things might have happened. And so you're in this situation where there is a major, major, major undertaking. It might deal with contracts as well because the High Priestess with that Torah in her hands. It deals with like legality, it deals with contracts, it deals with learning, it deals with like some major, major event where it might even involve other people. And so you're trying to be calculated about this. You're trying to figure out when is the right time and you're trying to uh, you know, look at the, you know, it's sort of like the looking at the stars and trying to see when the, the, the stars align. In this picture, you don't have the star, okay? All you see is the moon and it's like, it, it's so overwhelming and you're just like, I don't know if I can trust my intuition. I want this really badly. So I, I don't know if I'm biased. I don't know if I'm able to trust it, but I feel like the stars are calling, the stars are aligned and this is the right time. And I feel you might have some spiritual hunches, people in the spiritual realm pushing a situation along and telling you, you know, you can't wait on this any longer. You need to kind of push for it. The, the tides are coming in and you need to just, you know, ride with the tides. So I feel like there's a situation here you have been kind of resisting, resisting because you're not 100% sure. And I feel that it's time for you to take those small steps see where it leads you and then you're going to be um you're going to get some type of validation that it is the right path it is the, the right way because i i see you mulling over the situation and um water signs in general take a really really long time for their emotional state to kind of match up with their uh, mental or physical space so like you you might feel like oh physically i'm okay with it but then emotionally you're not so you have to like wait for everything to catch up everything to be in sync before things start moving before you you make those actions and so i feel like there was a situation you, you've been thinking over for the past three months for the past three weeks even four months four weeks whatever it is and i feel like it was a, a weighty decision okay it, a lot of thoughts were weighing on your mind and you needed some time to take care of all the other areas of your life before you can choose to walk down this path or choose to go forward with this endeavor and you've been mulling it over and i am looking at these bugs these insects here it's almost like mothballs you know where something is very stale and old and it hasn't been moved around and it's collecting dust and then the the moths are coming in to eat like the 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 dust and the, the mites and all of that. So I feel like it's a situation that has been stalled. It hasn't been um, worked at or dealt with or re uh, a resolution has not been reached. And so it just lingers, it just stagnates. And so I feel like the universe is telling you one step at a time, make the gesture, okay? Get some air, get out of the house, um, start moving, start moving. Once you start moving, once you take those small steps, it doesn't have to be a giant leap. You're not jumping over a cliff. You know, you're not jumping to the other side of the earthly divide. You're just taking small steps at, the, at a time, getting your feet wet, learning a new things. And I feel that you're gonna come to the resolution or you're gonna come to the, the realization that this is the right thing to do. It's just a matter of trusting that your intuition I feel like your intuition is a little bit blocked off because you might be scared and you're not deferring to, you know, the, um, the right set of advice or whatever you're getting from your intuition. And so there's a situation here, it's a huge undertaking and it needs to be done and, you know, one step at a time, one small step at a time. And once you start to get the ball rolling in, in, in that direction, you're going to realize that this is the right path, okay? Everything else looks really, really good. Uh, relationship seems to me to be very strong. Uh, healing is highly indicated here, and I don't feel like it's healing um, in a way where it's like somebody broke your heart and you want to heal. I don't, I don't sense that. I feel like for many of you, there might have been illnesses or like rehabilitation, and you're recovering from that. Okay, and then I'm also feeling like a huge undertaking that you're 
you have been hesitant about and now is the right time for you to keep things moving okay i do hope the reading is helpful for you guys and it is really nice to uh, reconnect with you guys um, for those who have been emailing me, I don't do private readings anymore. I do have a link in the description box for a psychic. She's based out of California. Her name is Bridget. She's phenomenal. If you want a uh, reading, you can click on the link and book a reading directly through her. Okay? I will be back next month. I hope you guys enjoy your October 2019. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.